you want to see more guides like this or see a full uncut version of this guide, feel free to go to proguides.com or just click the link in the description below. Riven's a bruiser for the most part. You can play her as an assassin if you want to or if the enemy team comp allows for it. You go in and deal as much damage as you can before you die, or just go in, dive for the squishies, and get out cleanly. With low cooldowns, no mana costs, no restrictions on how often you can cast your spells, really. Riven is one of the biggest snowballers in the game. With no mana and low cooldowns on her spells, she can bully anyone out of lane once you get even just a small lead. But also, as a con, she can get bullied very hard. Riven's passive is sort of like a sheen. Every time you cast an ability, you get a stack, and on every attack, you deal an extra portion of your damage to your opponent. To fully make use of Riven's passive, you want to weave in auto attacks as often as possible between spell casts. Typically, in fights or trades, you want to use one auto per spell if you can afford to. Riven's Q is a great spell. It's one of my favorites in the entire League of Legends like roster set. You can press Q to dash forward slightly, dealing damage in a crescent shape, and then within four seconds you can use it again, and then again. What's beautiful about the spell is the cooldown starts after the first press. The cooldown is 13 seconds through all ranks as well, but once you get 45% CDR, it can go down to just about 8 seconds. Riven's Q lets her reposition and attack at the same time, keeping her in position for when an opponent is running away, or if you want, you can just use it as an escape to run away from a trade. The third Q has a little bit of a longer animation, and Riven kind of jumps and does a, a somersault, and then knocks anyone up nearby her when she lands for 0.25 seconds. It's useful for breaking the flow of enemy attacks and combos, and for buying you a little bit of time. Raven's W is just a basic stun around her in melee range for 0.75 seconds. It's got a low cooldown and does nice damage. The cooldown goes down with rank, so as you level it up, you will be able to use it a lot in fights. It's just used as a general break the flow of your enemy combo. Riven's E is a pretty basic spell. You dash forward in the direction of your cursor and shield at the same time. The cooldown decreases with level and the shield increases with level, making it one of the best skills to max. I like to try to make use of both the movement and the damage blocking portion of the spell to be fully efficient. So I'll look for opportunities where I can both reposition and get a better position to attack my opponents. I'll usually wait until I can use it to run away and block damage at the same time. What's significant about the spell is once you have maxed out cooldown reduction, it's on a 3.3 second cooldown and the shield lasts for 1.5 seconds. Ribbon can stay shielded for almost half of the time. A lot of people like to use their skills as soon as they come up, especially damage skills. So they usually have damage on a, a rhythm. And once you know your opponent's spell or patterns, if you can predict when they're going to use it, you can just block all of their damage with such a low cooldown shield. You'll have it up every time their main spell is up. Riven's R increases her damage by 20% and increases the range on all of her offensive spells. Then sometime in the next 15 seconds, she can cast it again to do a large cone-shaped skill shot that does more damage the lower your targets are. You can either wait until someone's low and use it to finish them off, or when you see a bunch of people kind of low, you can use it just to get off damage when you think you can hit a lot of people. The skill does up to three times the damage as your opponent approaches one quarter health. Once your opponent gets below a quarter health, there's no need to hold on to it. You can just use it at that point. It'll do the maximum damage. Since most fights don't last more than 15 seconds, I just use that at the beginning to increase my overall damage. Riven is great at punishing mistakes. I'd say she's the best champion at punishing mistakes, actually. She has one of the highest damage outputs for people who misstep, and one of the lowest damage outputs for people who position themselves perfectly. Against ranged champions, you'll never get off any meaningful trades against the opponent if they position well, but if they misstep, you can easily take them from full to zero. If you can close the gap and land your stun without having to burn all four of your movement spells, then you can deal a significant amount of damage. But if you have to use all four of your movement spells, then you'll have nothing left, since your movement spells are also your damage spells or damage blocking spells. A lot of champions have some sort of defensive mechanism, like if you were to ever face a vein top, she has her condemn to push you back, and that's the only thing she can do other than walk backwards and tumble. A lot of champions have some sort of stun, some sort of CC to get away. Look for opportunities where they burn that. My favorite opportunity to look for is against people with long cooldown escapes or CCs, like Gnar for example. His jump is like over 20 second cooldown at level 1, and that's his only escape. A lot of times when I trade with a Gnar, they'll blow their jump, but then before the jump comes back up, they will come back to lane and farm as if everything's fine. And then when that happens, you can kill them for free. Another opportunity I try to look for is when an opponent uses one of their skills on the minions to farm it. Because then for a few seconds, that skill is down, that means they can't use it on you, and it's just an ever so slight of an advantage. If I'm against a Darius and I'm losing, 
I can't beat him in a full-on trade, but he uses his Q on the minions, then that's an opportunity for the next few seconds that I want to look for to try to trade with him. Against melee opponents, usually I lead in with E, and then I'll use Q then W, and we even auto text in between as much as possible, and then finish off with the other two Qs. I'll make sure to wait for my shield to either be broken or have expired before using my stun so that it's not wasted. And also I'll make sure to use the third Q when I don't have my shield or when I don't have my stun. I'll make sure the stun is over before I use my third Q since it's another CC. And whenever I can, I'll try to time my spells so that they happen right when my opponent is about to finish their attack animation to further lower their damage output. Against ranged champions, I usually lead in with a Q first, and then E, then W, Q, and Q, fitting in as many auto attacks as I can in between those. I start off with the Q first because I only want to use the shield once I'm pretty sure I'll start taking damage, so I'll wait until I get a little bit closer, since most ranged champions, you need two movement spells to get to them anyway. Once you get Tiamat in lane, you can animation cancel it neatly together with your shield, or you can just fit it in between spells and treat it sort of like an auto attack. One of the keys to trading as Riven is knowing her auto attack timer. With every champion, there is a set amount of time where you cannot attack. For Riven, it's about 1.2 seconds on average, I would say. And during that time is the best time to cast spells, since you wouldn't be able to attack anyway. One of the key elements to trading is getting your skills on cooldown as fast as possible without using them all too quickly at once. You want your spells constantly coming back up in the middle of the trade. Against some champions that Riven has a hard time against, going in with your usual combo of dashing in towards them and then getting off all your spells and walking away won't work very well because you won't have any spells left to disengage. And you don't want to use your third Q to disengage because it has a CC and it'll be wasted if you use it to run away. My favorite way to trade against these strong champions is to use my Q, wait the maximum amount of time possible, four seconds, use the next Q, and by doing this, you get the cooldown rolling. So then when you use your third Q, your Q will almost be back up, depending on how much cooldown reduction you have. Before the fight, eight seconds before, I get the Q rolling on its cooldown, and then when the third Q is about to expire, I go in with it without using my shield. I get the knock up on them, then usually you can fit in an auto attack, and then you stun. It'll proc Thunderlords, and then you can use your shield to run away. Usually they'll, they'll throw some spell or damage ability at you. And then you get a clean Thunderlords proc, and it doesn't do that much damage, but it's basically free. You have them CC'd the whole time you're in their range, and then as you run away, you have your shield on, so they can't really hit you. If the trade is going poorly, if you don't think you'll win past that trade, you can use your shield to run away, block the damage that they can throw along as they get out of the stun, and then if they keep chasing you, like if a Darius pulls you back in, or if a Garen were to like flash on you, your Q will be up in a couple seconds and you can use it to run away. There's a similar combo you can do on ranged champions. You burn your Q again, off to the side or onto a minion. Then you wait four seconds, you burn it again, and then you use your E to get up to them, and then use your third Q to hit them. You auto attack them, you stun them, proc your Thunderlords, and at that point, you won't have your E up. I usually like to run into a bush, if possible, so that they can't hit you or they can't see you to land their spells. Usually that trade won't go very well unless there's a bush to run into or some way to disengage, unless you have the power to beat them with one more Q. Because your Q will still come up soon, you can use it to try to kill them. But against ranged champions, Riven really can't go in unless she has the power to completely kill them. Because if you don't have the damage to fully wipe them out, as you're running back to your tower or back to your minions when you don't have any spells up, they can just walk behind you and tag you with spells and you'll take a lot of damage. It's almost never worth it unless you can fully kill them. Whenever my opponent goes for a minion, I'll try to hit them, I'll like tag them with a stun or the third Q and then just dash away. It's a very small trade, but it's free damage. And since Riven doesn't have any mana costs, or any limitations on how often she can cast her spells other than a cooldown, it's free damage. Although, you have to make sure the enemy jungler isn't nearby, because if they're nearby, you'll basically have burned your spells, and then they can just come in and kill you, or CC you and lock you down. Riven's cooldowns are all pretty close to each other. In skirmishes, I like to blow all the cooldowns and then walk away until they come back up. A lot of people make the mistake of chasing for too long or too far. You can get your skills off, get some free damage on them and run away, and then they'll chase you thinking all your skills are down. Then as soon as they come back up, or maybe a couple seconds before they come back up, you just go back in and then you wipe them out. Good players will know that your skills are coming back up and run away a few seconds before they do come up. Don't make the mistake of using your skills to chase them down. If you use your E and three Qs to get back to your opponent, all you'll have left is your stun and then they'll just kill you. The easiest animation cancel to do with Riven is using a spell at the same time as your shield. If you press on your keyboard, just E and then whatever other spell, you will cast both at the same time. You have to press E just a tiny bit before. So if I have Tiamat bound to 1, I would want to press E1 very quickly together. And Riven will cast Tiamat while she's moving. And then the Tiamat will go off at the final location of her E. Anytime I use my shield in fights, I'll try to use Tiamat at the same time if it's up. But if I don't have my shield up when Tiamat is up, it's always just fine to use it when you don't have your auto attack primed and when you don't have a spell to cast.
There's an animation cancel for disengaging that a lot of people don't really use on Riven. If you use your stun at the same time as your shield, it actually goes off where you started your dash. So a great disengage tool. If there's a Garen chasing you or a Darius trying to finish you off and you have your E and stun up, once the animation is done, you dash away. But you can actually save that third of a second or so, which may not seem like much, but it, it does add up when you use it all the time. One of the most common animation cancels is using Riven's shield and then the first part of her wind slash. The first part of Riven's ult, she just kind of raises her arm and stands in place. It's a pointless animation. So by combining it with her shield, you just get rid of that downtime. There's two main types of animation cancelling. The first one is casting a spell at the same time as your shield. Any spell, including item active, like Tiamat or Hydra. If you press E and then any other spell a tenth of a second later, I like to literally just like mash it on the keyboard with one finger slightly above the other. You will cast them at the same time. If you cast E and then Q, her shield animation will be completely negated. The other form of animation cancelling is a bit harder. For whatever reason, right after Riven's dash, there's a 0.5 or a 0.75 second window where she can cast two other spells together. There's some weird restrictions on it. I call this kind of animation cancelling double casting, where you cast two spells that aren't her shield together. But the rules are kind of wonky. You cannot start with her Q, and you have to end with her Q. You cannot cast her R and W together. You cannot cast R and then Tiamat together. But you can do Tiamat and then Q. You can do WQ or RQ. To completely make it smooth, you want to use your shield first at some point, and then within the 0.75 second window, double cast your W and Q, and it'll look like she dashes and then uses her Q, and the stun circle just kind of like drops below her as she's moving. It looks very fluid. Her third Q can hop over walls, which becomes incredibly useful for map movement, escaping, and chasing. Aside from her third Q, or flash, Riven has no way to get over a wall. Riven's third Q has a pretty low range. If your third Q places you more than halfway through the wall, just like Flash, you will go over the wall. That lets her jump over some pretty big walls. There are a couple annoying gimmicks with using her third Q for wall hops though, that you have to keep in mind. Riven's third Q doesn't go towards your cursor unless you have it moused over a target. So you have to be facing the wall that you want to wall hop over. You can't just go up next to the wall and then press Q over the wall. That won't work. You have to make actually make sure you walk up to the wall facing that direction. So usually when I want to line up a wall hop, I will run near the wall, leaving a little bit of space to move into the wall so that my character can actually face the right direction. Or if I'm in a panic, I could just use my E to automatically make my character face that way. A little known trick that most people don't use is you can actually place a trinket in the direction that you want your character to face and she will turn to face that direction. So you can actually line up next to the wall, then use your trinket over the wall and then quickly press Q before your character aggroes on someone else for a very clean wall hop, especially for the harder ones that require good angles. Most walls, you don't have to have that good of an angle since Riven will be able to hop over it anyway. But for some of the thicker walls in the jungle, you have to be pretty precise with it. Farming with Riven is really cool. Riven doesn't have any single target spells. You can't just use one spell on one minion. And usually the minions are clumped up. So you have to be very careful with how you choose your last hits and how you choose your spells for last hitting. My favorite way to play Riven, I max Q last. It rarely actually does any damage. Usually it'll do like 20 to 40 damage early levels. I use it to set up last hits, or if I'm really feeling brave, I can use it to try to last hit, but it barely does more damage than a minion auto attack at rank one. So I only do that if I have to. Farming under tower is a bit more difficult. It almost sort of feels like a puzzle. If you have a wave of minions all at different healths and they're somewhat clumped together and you have spells that are all AOE, figuring out how to last hit them is challenging but also satisfying when you get it all. Early game, two tower shots and one auto attack will kill a melee minion. If you have rank one Q, it should take two Qs to kill the minion if you don't want to use auto attacks. A cast your minion is usually one auto, then one tower shot, then one auto. Or you can just Q the minion, get your passive charge, and then auto attack it to kill it. In terms of fighting, Riven's kit has a little bit of everything. If your partner is someone who relies on a skill shot like Nidalee or Lee Sin, Riven can start the fight off by using her third Q, followed by a stun, giving your, your teammate like a little bit over a full second to land their skill shot, or otherwise just gap close. And also, if her jungler is the one with more CC, she can let her teammate be the one doing the CC, and then she can be the one doing the damage. Of course, you can also just couple your CC together. You never want to use your CC at the same time as any teammate, really. Overlapping CCs is a waste. Riven can be both the initiator and the follow-up. Like I said earlier, if Riven's jungler is someone who needs to land a skill shot to make the gank successful, like Nidalee or Lee Sin, Riven can be the one to quickly use all of your dashes. You'll lose your damage, but you'll allow your jungler to get off a lot of damage. You use all of your dashes to get up to your opponent and then lock them down for one second by using your third Q and your stun in no particular order. 
When you're getting ganked by your opponent, try to use that EW animation cancel where you stun them and dash away at the same time. If you can hit both of them with that stun, sometimes I'll even walk back towards the enemy tower just to hit both of them with the stun and then get away. At the beginning of the game, I almost always start with a long sword, and then either three potions or a fillable potion. The first time I recall is usually when I can afford Caulfield's Warhammer. I wouldn't normally TP to lane unless it's pushing towards the enemy, or if there's a huge wave about to get to the tower. In both cases, if you don't TP, you'll miss a lot of EXP. The goal of Riven lane phase depends a lot on the matchup. With easier matchups, you want to snowball it, usually pretty hard. And tankier or harder matchups where you can't really get kills, just farming evenly is good, and then out roaming your opponent. I would say the easier matchups are squishy champions without much target CC. People like Zed, Lee Sin, Gangplank, Yasuo. These squishy champions that don't have a, an easy way to lock her down. They have lots of skill shots and high damage that can be avoided and, and dodged. The harder matchups are mo mostly ranged champions, uh, like Vladimir, Lulu, Lissandra. Even harder are champions with good CC and good trading power. People who can out-trade Riven very easily have good ways to lock her down that can't really be dodged. I'd say in any matchup where you're against a counter, I would just try to farm. Make sure you take TP so that you can go roam and make plays elsewhere. I wouldn't expect to get kills unless my jungler were to come top a lot. But in any of the first few matchups I mentioned, I would try to snowball it as hard as I could. If you happen to be the first one to die in lane and you start losing, you have the option of trying to outplay your opponent and making a comeback, or you can just settle your losses and just farm, be a little bit behind your opponent until the team fights start. I would pay attention to how your team is doing. If your other lanes and jungle are winning, I would just play it safe. Just try to remain useful and not go for aggressive plays. But if your team is also losing, then I would try for something very risky to maybe make a big turnaround. The worst case scenario is you lose a game that would have already been lost if you didn't do anything. Usually in teamfights as Riven, I like to flash onto as many of the enemies as possible and use all of our AoE spells to get off a lot of damage. If the enemy team has a lot of CC, or CC that I can't easily avoid, I will go relatively tanky. If the enemy team doesn't have that much CC, or, or CC that I can easily avoid with a QSS, I'll probably have built full glass cannon with tons of damage. In those cases, I think it's fine to just flash onto the enemy AD carry or the enemy mid laner, if you can just flash onto them and immediately kill them before anyone can react. But in general, I do look for those opportunities where they clump up a lot. Riven can't really engage fights on her own unless she has flash. My favorite way to engage a fight would be to use your first Q, wait, use the second Q, wait, and then before the third Q is up, find a time to use E and R together to get rid of your R animation, and then flash third Q. And then my general rule of thumb is if I can hit through people, regardless of who they are, I'll go for it. Or maybe if I can hit two, the AD carry and the mid laner together, I'll go for that. Or the AD carry and support. If it were like the AD carry and the tank, I wouldn't go for it. And once you get that third Q, you have about enough time to, to get an auto attack off and then stun, then TM at, and then wind slash. And then after that, you probably have to run. And your Q will be up if you've properly waited between your first, second, and third Qs. Then you can use those Qs to run away. Riven's role in the vision game is basically the same as most other top laners. Have a yellow trinket or even a blue trinket later on and just use it whenever it's up. I actually like using Riven as a distraction tool. If I get a lead in my lane, I like to not kill the enemy tower. I like to just kill them and push the minions into the tower, making them miss as much EXP as possible. And then once my opponent is weak, I'll just keep pushing in top, forcing the mid laner and the jungler to come for me, maybe even the support. And while they're all spending time on me, my team can get dragon, they can get bot lane, or I can push bot, do the same thing, my team can get baron. Riven has really great escape, especially in non-team fight scenarios. Because her shield is on such a low cooldown, she can escape very quickly. She can outrun almost anyone, especially when you wall hop or use the WE animation cancel to gain further distance. And as long as you keep using your shield to block damage every time it's up, she has like a ridiculous amount of damage absorption power, as long as they're not bursting you down all at once. So in 1v1 or 1v2 situations, Riven's really good at wasting time and escaping. So my goal as Riven in most of my games is to waste as much time on the enemy as possible. I don't like team fighting because most of the time the enemy team comp will have something like a Janna or an Alistar or some way to repel you off of the team. I'd much rather be the split pusher, waste their time and then TP if, if I need to. 
My favorite way to win games as Riven is to be an annoying split pusher who takes up the enemy's time. If you're stronger than the enemy top laner or whoever on the enemy team has TP, that you become an extremely powerful person in the game because then you can split push and they have to send at least two people to get you. If they send only one, you can beat them. And if they send two, then your team can go get Baron or get Dragon or push another lane and then you can just run away while they send two people. The only way it would go wrong is if you quickly get killed and then the enemy team can regroup before your team can actually do anything. So in those cases, try to ward up some of your entrances, have your team push, push at the same time or push an objective at the same time, either like a lane or Baron. That way, if the enemy team comes to get you with two or more people, your team can immediately jump on that Baron or jump on that top lane tower, something like that. Or if the enemy team five man dives your four man team, you can either TP into the fight or if your team can disengage, just let them disengage and you just push in towers and you get it for free. If you're the weaker person though, then you basically have to group up with your team. If you can't beat the enemy top laner on your own, you have to group with your team and force the enemy top laner to come join the fight. And that's a hard position to be in. If you want to see more guides like this or see a full uncut version of this guide, feel free to go to proguides.com or just click the link in the description below.